Hello fellow Gaijins, welcome back to the Japanese basics for beginners series. It's really been a while since the last episode and I'm excited to be back. I decided that from this episode onwards I will not go too much into vocabulary or just in general like teach new vocabulary to you without any purpose because I think you can really do this on your own by just going through flashcards. I will leave a few really useful sets in the description, check them out if you want to learn some new vocabulary. I recommend those sets because I've used them myself and I learned a lot from them. In general I want to show you a few vocabulary words that will be used in the example sentences I have for you in the grammar part. I will do the same with the kanji as well. So without further ado let's get into the vocabulary that would be useful to know for today. Ame, ame, furu, furu, ame ga furu, ame ga furu, hareru, hareru, owaru, owaru, hajimeru, hajimeru, ato, ato. Mado. Mado. The kanjis that I will use in the example sentences are these three. Koto. Owaru. Hajimeru. Let's get into the grammar. The first grammar point that I want to talk about is ta koto aru. Now what I mean with ta is just the informal past form of any verb. For example, tabeta or shita or hanashita. This grammar point is used to say I have done something or I have never done something. For example, if I say shita koto ga arimasu, then this just means I have done that. If I say tabeta koto ga arimasu, it means I have eaten that. So if I put soba before the sentence, it would just become soba o tabeta koto ga arimasu. That means I have eaten soba before. In general, in my life, I have at least once eaten soba. If you want to make this negative, so let's say I have never eaten soba in my life, I could say soba o tabeta koto ga arimasen. You just take the arimas and then make it negative. If you want to talk casually, you can just use aru and nai. For example, soba o tabeta koto ga nai. I have never eaten soba. Or soba o tabeta koto ga you can do this with any verb, just put it in informal past form and then use koto ga arimasu or koto ga arimasen. One thing that I want to mention is that sometimes Japanese people don't say the particle ga when they use this form. So they would just say soba o tabeta koto aru, soba o tabeta koto nai. I would still recommend you to use the ga if you can. The next grammar is desho or daro. Desho is the polite form and daro is the impolite form or just a casual form. There are two different uses for this form. One use is if you want to say right at the end of the sentence. I could for example just say kono soba tottemo oishii desho. Now when I say desho I am looking for affirmation so I am looking for the same opinion from my op from the opposite party. You could just translate it to wow this is so good right? It usually just replaces the des in a sentence and it becomes this right at the end of the sentence. The other use is when you want to talk about the probability of something occurring. So you're talking about something that might occur. Very often it is used in tenki yoho. Tenki yoho is just a weather forecast and if you're watching TV you will hear desho very very often. They say it after every sentence that is something like tomorrow it might rain or tomorrow it might be sunny. If I would use it in Japanese I could say Amega furu desho. Now the difference between this desho and the desho from before is the intonation. If you look at the pronunciation, it is slightly different than the one before. The desho that can roughly translate to right would also go up in intonation. But if you want to talk about something that might happen, you usually go down with your voice. Or you just stay on the same like level. You don't go up like in a question, for example. Tomorrow it will be sunny. Ashita wa hareru desho. This might be counterintuitive if you are used to using the desho, but try watching the Tenki Yoho, which is the weather forecast, in Japan or any Japanese TV and you will see that they will use this word a lot. This was quite an easy grammar, so let's go to the next one. Verb stem plus hajimeru or owaru. Hajimeru and owaru mean to start and to stop respectively. So it kind of makes sense that when you put the verb stem of any verb in front of those two words, it just becomes to stop doing something or to start doing something. 
Now they're really, really useful for just talking about temporal situations. So do this after he started doing that or do this after you are done with this and stuff like that. The verb stem is easy to figure out. Take any verb in mas form and just take away the mas. Let's take for example shimas. So suru in polite form. So you take away the mas and then you have the stem and you just add hajimeru and it becomes shi hajimeru. Shi hajimeru just means to start doing something. It works the same with owaru. Shi owaru. To stop doing something. If we take taberu for example, tabe owaru or tabe hajimeru. You can use this in past form, negative form, and all the other stuff. So <laughs> if I just say shi owatta, it's the informal past form for owaru. So it just means stopped doing. Tabe owatta. Tabe hajimeta. You can also say this politely. Tabe owarimashita. Tabe hajimemashita. You can conjugate this stuff like any other verb. This form is often used with words that have to do with time. So for example, kara, made, and atode. Let's take atode for example. If I say tabe oatta atode, it just means after you've finished eating. And for example, if you're talking to a child, you can say after you've finished eating, you can play. Tabe oatta atode asonde mo ii. Now, asonde mo ii is a form that I'm not sure we've talked about yet, but it's just a te form plus mo ii. And that just means you're allowed to do something. The last grammar part I want to talk about today are transitive and intransitive verbs. In English, that would be to open a door. So I myself open a door, which is transitive. And intransitive would just be the door opened by itself. So nobody opened the door. In Japanese, it actually just works the same. You have a direct object in a sentence and that direct object is done in action on by a subject in the sentence. In this case, it's transitive. If you have an intransitive verb, it usually just refers to a verb before that is used just as a subject that does something by itself. Now, how do you see if something is transitive or intransitive in terms of grammar? The best way to see this are particles. If you see an O in front of the verb, you can almost be 100% sure that this is a transitive verb. O always marks the direct object that comes just before it, and it usually just means that the action is done on the object by some subject that is mentioned beforehand. That's why the O is always like a sign that this is a transitive verb. If there is no O before the verb and there is a GA in between the verb and the subject, then you can almost be sure that this is an intransitive verb. There are verbs that have only a transitive or only an intransitive version. Verbs like to drink, to eat, to read, to make, all of those are transitive verbs. Verbs like to go, to work, so iku, hataraku, and so on, are intransitive verbs. Hey guys, sorry for interrupting, it's actually me from the future, so I've finished recording the whole video, but then I noticed my camera only records for up to 30 minutes and then it just stops, so because of this I don't have any footage of my face after the first 30 minutes of recording. That's why from now on I will just show this panda as my replacement. <laughs> I hope you enjoy the video. In English, for example, you have one verb and you can then use it intransitively or transitively. In Japanese, you actually have two different verbs which are called transitivity pairs that have a transitive or an intransitive use. This is not the case for all of the verbs, but most of them do have a pair of verbs that you have to learn separately. This sounds really hard, but it's actually really easy because they have the same kanji. So if you're, for example, reading something and you see the kanji, you know what it means, even if you don't know exactly how it should be pronounced. Here are a few good examples for transitivity pairs. Hairu, ireru, deru, dasu, kawaru, kaeru, kieru, kesu, tatsu, tateru, tomeru, tomaru. Now this might be a little bit confusing, but it's actually not that hard and it's really useful at the same time. Like you always know what is acted upon what and how things work in a Japanese sentence because it is such a clear distinction between transitive and intransitive. I might make a video on this topic itself and just go over a few verbs and how they are used in Japanese sentences if you want this, uh, like if it's not clear enough because I think this can be a very confusing topic if it is not studied correctly. 
But I think that if you study this a little bit, like if you just read in general and you will see that something is transitive or intransitive, you will just by yourself just remember this stuff. Like you don't have to actually like be like, I don't think that you need an explanation for anything, but if you want to have a separate video for transitive and transitive stuff, I can make one if you want. Let's make a quick summary about transitive and intransitive verbs. Transitive verbs always take a direct object. That is also why when you have a transitive verb, you always have an O particle after the object that is actually acted upon. For intransitive verbs, they do not need a direct object and they always follow the particle ga. Just remember these points and then when you actually read something in Japanese, think about every verb if it is transitive or if it is intransitive and with time you will get used to also using transitive and intransitive verbs and stuff like that because it's just really useful to use. Here are two example sentences that show these differences really well. Boku wa mado o akemashita. Mado ga akimashita. The verb aku means to open. The verb akeru also means to open, but aku is intransitive and akeru is transitive. As you can see in the transitive form, you see an o, so it's transitive, and in the intransitive part, you see a ga with no o, so it implies that this is intransitive. This might be a shorter video than usual because I haven't edited it yet, so I'm not sure if it is actually shorter, <laughs> but it feels shorter. So tell me what do you think about this new format, like only talking about vocabulary that is actually useful for this lesson and <laughs> not about other stuff. Um, and really focusing on some important grammar points and also taking some more time to talk about them. And if you have any suggestions or just ideas about stuff that I could implement, just tell me in the comments below. If you want to help out this channel and make me happy, <laughs> consider leaving a like and subscribing. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.